two of our leading authors, Dr. Mark Greenberg, Dr. Nitin Agrawal, and the founder of our partner, Synaptique. Um, we've created new spaced repetition flashcards based on Greenberg's Handbook of Neurosurgery, 10th edition. So it's totally updated. And I'd just like to ask um, our two esteemed authors, and of course, um, Ryan, Starting with you, Mark, um, thanks for taking the time out, both of you coming to our booth. Congratulations on the 10th edition. Thank you. Um, more than 40 years, I guess? Well, I mean, you're gonna count residency, yeah, uh, but we can do that, we can probably say that. It's been a long time yeah. and a lot of- That's when the book started, really, so, during residency. How do you feel about reaching this milestone? Um, you know, it's it's a number. Uh, it's just like you know, how do you feel about your whatever birthday? You know, it's it's just a number. But I feel good about uh, this edition just because it's got, to me, more of what I wanted to include, and it's always the case. And in a few years, I'll be looking forward to the next edition for the same reason. And I'm hoping Dr. Agarwal will be joining him um, in a few years. So. Dr. Agarwal, you've used Greenberg's Handbook of Neurosurgery and inspired you to create your own body of work. Um, what do you think about the Greenberg franchise, as I like to refer to it? Now we have space repetition flashcards. Um, what do you think, and are you looking forward to following into Dr. Greenberg's footsteps, for example? Yeah, I, I think that we are very lucky to have this book. It is uh, the holy grail for our specialty from when you're just learning about neurosurgery to even now, um, a copy sits proudly on my desk, uh, and I think that of all of our colleagues. And um, what's, what makes us very lucky is that it's both brain and spine, and it's the gamut of all of neurosurgery. And um, we're fortunate to have somebody who's so dedicated to putting the time and effort to put this together, because my book is maybe a fifth of the size, uh, if not smaller, and that portability is what we wanted, but this really is comprehensive, and it lets somebody who's joining our field um, get all the knowledge they need to really take care of patients. So we're really lucky to, to have you and we're really lucky to have the book. And uh, my wife is a, a dermatologist and uh, I think that um, she would be lucky if they had a Greenberg of dermatology, but we have a Greenberg of neurosurgery and we're fortunate. Oh, thank you for those kind words, Dennis. And Ryan, I know that you use, also use the Handbook of New Research, right. your thoughts and why you created 11,000 flashcards based on this masterpiece. <laughs> yeah. It was our Bible preparing for a residency and it's a lot of incredible information. It's uh, hard to memorize that much stuff though and it's good to have uh, a lot of this stuff you know, on the top of your mind when you're taking care of patients. Um, so I wanted to try to build a more efficient way to learn uh, and re retain this incredible information indefinitely. And then an easy question for both of you. I'll start with you, Dr. Agarwal. What's the best part about being a neurosurgeon? Uh, by far, the best part is going in and I would say interacting with our patients. I mean, any patient that you get a chance to take care of, um, it's life-changing and they, they really trust you and that, that trust is, is amazing. Um, and then the second part for me is working with our residents in the future of neurosurgery. And, you know, I, I'm actually very proud to be standing next to this man because uh, he is doing something incredible, um, changing how we we educate the future. I think space repetition learning has been shown in other fields to be um, a game changer for learning. And it's time that it comes to neurosurgery. So um, I'm actually very proud to, to uh, be standing next to you and, and to meet you. And I think our patients and our, our next generation are the two best parts of my job. Thank you. And Dr. Greenberg, what's the best part about being a neurosurgeon. Well, I think what Dr. Agarwal said is making a difference in somebody's life who has a condition that anything from a painful condition to something life-threatening um, runs a whole gamut and we treat all, all age groups. It's not uh, uh, gender specific, you know, we, it's not something where cardiology, you know, is, you're gonna have a more male dominated patient population. I like the fact that we have pediatrics involved and it's just really the depth and breadth of neurosurgery is really, in, you know, without, without parallel. And then what's the most challenging part 
of being, and I know you're both now program directors. Um, congratulations, Dr. Agarwal. Um, what's the most challenging part of your job? I think uh, trying to master the volume of ever-changing information and keeping up to date with it and um, applying it to your practice. And the follow-up is, can you briefly describe, and we've talked about this before, your process of updating this book because it's done like no other I've ever seen in publishing. Yeah, I, mean, I think people might be surprised to learn because I've spoken to other authors and they have a regimen where they take sections and they go through them and they have a very well you know, organized methodology to that. And I am more of an organic kind of approach. You know, when things come up, um, I try to go back and look at things here. Sometimes it's hard to do with some of the more fundamental things, which is, uh, which is unfortunate because that's for the early learner, they're the ones who really need to have that information uh, up to date and accessible. So, but I try to go back and either add material that's not in there or improve what I'm looking at so, you know, to make it a better, better book. Thank you. And then my final question um, to you guys. Who inspired, you know, who inspired you um, to become neurosurgeons? Is there a person, a mentor, a family member? Um, who inspired you? Who was your mentor? And what were the best qualities that you found in that person? Well, um, I actually wanted to be a plastic surgeon. And I realized I wasn't good and looking enough to be a plastic surgeon. So I, in med school, met um, Dr. Robert Heary. And... Um, he was one of my main mentors, um, a, a, a father figure in spine surgery for neurosurgery, um, really learning and taking after the orthopedic surgeons and bringing instrumentation to spine surgery. Um, and in residency, Dr. Hamilton, um, and uh, you know, in fellowship, I had obviously Dr. Chow and Dr. Mubinetti and Dr. Bourbon, but I think the central team for each of these people um, has shaped how I try and view my future and is, um, they cared about my, my interests and um, who I was as a person and I, you know, I sit down with Dr. Hamilton and I tell him that his EQ level is unparalleled. And I think all neurosurgeons have a high IQ and some of us have a you know, high SQ, but the EQ level um, that mentors have is what um, really speaks to me. And um, I think that's what it takes to put, a get, put together a book like this. You have to be selfless and devote your time to help other people learn. And uh, same thing with you, uh, with these flashcards and um, uh, our field is lucky to have people who put in this time for others. And same question to you. You know, I think I was initially attracted to the field in particular. It was probably one of my early exposures to medical, the, you know, medicine was a neuroscience. Um, and then I think, you know, probably it was uh, some, some of the teachers when I was a medical student, some of the neurosurgeons that gave lectures to us, I found them to be approachable and I thought well this is you know it's I wasn't sure if I, it was something I could do and I in working with them and also the residents Julian Bales was a res, uh, resident when I was a uh, medical student at Northwestern so it was just I think a group of the people Leonard Cirillo was the first neurosurgeon I remember giving us a lecture on uh, pituitary surgery and uh, I just thought it was uh, the coolest thing ever, and he said, if any of you want to see an operation like this, stop by my office, and uh, my secretary will set you up. And I thought everybody for sure was going to rush there after class, so as soon as the class was over, I went over to his office, and I think I was the only one who ever showed up <laughs> from that invitation. So uh, I guess that shows I had an interest in, in it from the beginning. So. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the meeting here at ANS 2023 in Los Angeles, California.